In this demonstration, I'm going to show you the components of the lab simulator. The lab has four main areas. Over here on the left is the scenario window. The scenario describes the task you're required to perform during the lab activity. The main area where you're going to do most of your work is called the workspace. It includes all the items you'll work with and configure. For example, in this simulation we have a computer system and we have a keyboard. In addition to the scenario in the workspace, we also have the shelf. The shelf holds pieces of equipment organized by category. Right now we have cables and monitors. These are objects you'll use to complete configuration tasks over in the workspace. You can think of the shelf as your inventory of spare parts, or an online ordering system where you can order parts that you need. Now let's go through the process of completing a lab. The first thing you need to do is read the scenario. Read it very carefully because when you're done, you're evaluated on whether you did everything it asked you to do. Then you need to examine the objects within the workspace. You can use this slider to zoom in and out if you need to. So once you've familiarized yourself with the items within the workspace, you need to go over here to the shelf and use the categories displayed to find the objects required to complete the scenario. Before we can work with an object within the workspace, we have to add it to the workspace or connect it to an item that's already there. For example, to add this monitor to the workspace, we'll expand monitors and then drag it over here. I want to add the monitor to the workspace right next to the PC system itself, so I'm going to drop it right here. And now that object is added to the workspace. Once the object is in the workspace, I can manipulate it to accomplish the tasks in the scenario. In this example, I need to look at the back of the monitor, and I need to use cables to connect this monitor to the computer system and the power outlet. Let's look at the back of the computer as well as the monitor. By doing this, I can see the various connectors that are implemented on the monitor and on the PC system. With this done, now I need to use the appropriate cables to connect these two devices together and connect the monitor to the power outlet. Let's go over here and expand cables. And let's connect the monitor to the computer system using a video cable. I can click on the video cable so that it appears down here in the selected components window. Let's grab each connector and add it to the appropriate port on the back of the computer and on the back of the monitor. Let's drag this connector to the monitor. I'll release the mouse, and now one end of the connector is connected to the monitor. Now we need to connect the other end of the cable to the PC system, so I'm going to click and drag. And just like the other end of the cable, I need to pick the right port to connect it to. And now it's connected. There's another way to do it as well, and that's to drag the cable directly from the shelf and then drop it onto the appropriate connector. In this case, I'm going to drag the power connector and I'm going to drop it on the power socket on the monitor. Let's go ahead and use the AC Power Female Connector, and that end is now connected to the monitor itself, and let's plug the other end into the power strip. So at this point, we've applied power to the monitor and we've connected it to the PC. Now let's go ahead and switch to the front view of the monitor and the front view of the PC. And just like in real life, before I can connect either of these components, I have to turn them on. Let's turn on the monitor. If you hover over the power button, you'll notice that it's highlighted in blue. I'm going to click it to turn the monitor on. Let's go over to the computer and power it on as well. When I do, the system comes on and we switch to the operating system view of the computer. And as you can see, we have a full simulated Windows environment. It's not a real Windows system, it's a simulated Windows desktop. However, it does function in pretty much the same way a real Windows desktop would. Once you've identified that you've done everything that was required, go up here and click Done. When you do, it's going to evaluate whether or not you did everything correctly. Notice here we have a list of tasks that I was required to perform by the scenario, and is listed here under Task Summary. That's it for this demonstration. 